Please welcome. Yeah, so in this video, I'm going to show you um, how to derive a simple formula by solving a system of two equations and two unknowns. Um, and um, that simple formula is going to allow you to write infinitely many uh, Pythagorean triples. In other words, using that formula, you can come up with infinitely many Pythagorean triples. Now, recall that um, 3, 4, 5 is a base Pythagorean triple, as is 5, 12, 13. And you can start with these guys and multiply um, either this or this by a fixed number and get another Pythagorean triple, right? So you can generate Pythagorean triples, um, infinitely many of them, by starting with these two base Pythagorean triples. But what we're going to do is like cooler than that, which is that we're going to come up with um, the 3, 4, 5, the 5, 12, 13, and their multiples, and infinitely many other Pythagorean triples by this formula we're going to derive, yeah? Okay, cool. So uh, how do we do this? Well, um, first, recall that um, recall that the Pythagorean theorem said a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, if we divide this equation on both sides by c squared, we'll get a squared over c squared um, plus b squared over c squared um, equals 1. Now, um, this this last equation I wrote, we can rewrite as saying a over c squared plus b over c squared equals 1. And notice that this equation is strikingly similar to the equation of the circle um, that we have here, x squared plus y squared equals 1. Uh, we can think of x as a over c and y as b over c, and then the two equations are the same. And so um, instead of, um, you know, working with this, what we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out solutions to this equation. Um, and uh, we're going to make sure that those solutions are rational, so that they're like a over c and b over c, and equally importantly, that those solutions have, those rational solutions have the same denominator, right? And so, yeah, that's what we're going to do, and uh, our construction will allow for that, and then we'll be able to get infinitely many Pythagorean triples, like I said. Okay, cool. Now, um, so, 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 uh, and here's how we're going to do it, right? Like, so obviously we have one of our equations. We need to come up with the second equation. The second equation is um, something we could come up with by doing this, which is we anchor a line at negative 1, 0. That's why I've provided both coordinates for that point, negative 1, 0, right there. And we anchor a line there and give that line some slope m. Notice that I didn't say what m is, so we don't know the value of m. Um, and therefore, it could be this line, but it could also be this line. It could be infinitely many other lines, right, that are anchored at negative 1, 0, and then go through uh, the circle a second time. Now, notice that regardless of what the line looks like, uh, when we solve the system of equations, the line and the circle, we're going to find two points of intersection, one of them right here and the other one right there. Now, the first point of intersection will anticlimactically be negative 1, right? x equals negative 1 anyway, right there. The second one will be somewhere over here. Now, uh, first, let me show you that there are irrational solutions that we know of um, to this equation, right? For example, the coordinate root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2 solves this equation and has the same denominator as we require. Um, however, it's not a rational solution because root 2 is irrational. So we're looking for rational solutions. So how do we do that? Well, we require that our slope m be rational. If that's the case, if the slope m is rational, then this point will have to be rational because uh, if you start at negative 1, 0, and um, m is rational, so it's some number divided by some other number, you start at negative 1, 0, and go up some number, right, some integer, um, and then go over some other integer, then you're going to end up uh, at another point that will have rational coordinates, right? Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, so yeah, um, so, so long as m is um, rational, then this coordinate will avoid being 
something like square square root of two over two. And so in all of our lines, um, so long as we pick m to be rational, we're gonna get uh, a rational solution for the second point of intersection. And that's that's our interest, the second point of intersection, because this first one, like I said, is gonna be x equals negative one. Okay, okay. Um, all right, so how do we find this point? Well, we've already said it. We're just gonna solve the system that involves the line and the circle. Okay, cool. So, so, so um, one of the equations is um, x squared plus y squared equals one, and the other is this line. Well, I'll skip through the details, but it's pretty easy to show that the line um, with slope m going through negative one zero has to have equation y equals mx plus m. You can do that more carefully if you'd like, right? And so solving the system of equations uh, means that we substitute for this y with that, right? And then proceed to solve. So that'll look as follows. x squared plus mx plus m squared equals 1. But that's x squared plus m times x plus 1 all squared equals 1. But that's x squared plus m squared times x plus 1 squared equals 1. And then we could like multiply that out and we get x squared plus m squared times x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 1. Got it. And um, I guess we could put these guys somewhere like here, right? We need the space. And then um, this junk we don't need no more. So let's get rid of it. And now we've got um, x squared plus m squared x squared plus 2m squared x plus m squared equals 1. And now these two x squared terms we can lump into 1 if I just write m squared plus 1 times x squared, right? Uh, distribute back x squared m squared and then x squared, right? I just wrote them in reverse order. All right, cool. And then the middle term is just simply 2m squared x. And then we have plus m squared minus 1 equals 0. If we want to solve a quadratic, we want it to say equals 0. Um, yeah, and so I just subtracted 1 from both sides of the last equation. That's how I got that, right? Cool, cool, cool. All right, now let's use the quadratic formula to solve this equation. So quadratic formula is going to say, um, it's going to say um, that x will have to be minus b, so that's minus 2m squared, um, plus or minus square root of, I need longer than that, square root of b squared, so that's 2m squared squared, minus 4 times a, m squared plus 1, times c, m squared minus 1, all divided by uh, all divided by two a right, and so that's two times m squared plus one, right? Okay, so that's x equals minus two m squared plus or minus, and then it's square root of. And then it's uh, this here is going to say 4m to the fourth. And then minus, if you know anything about me, you'd know that the difference of squares is like one of my favorite things, like probably more than ice cream. And it's like right there, right? If we use difference of squares, what I just circled right here is m to the fourth minus 1. And uh, so we have negative 4 times m to the fourth minus 1, and then we have to divide by this. But so that I don't have to do much writing, um, let's uh, simplify here. or So that I have to, I can simplify my writing. 
Anyway, yeah, distributing the negative 4, you get negative 4 um, m to the 4th, and then it would be plus 4, right? But look, that would mean these two guys get rid of each other, so we just have square root of 4. Um, but square root of 4 is 2. So we could just write 2, and then we still have that denominator, which is this guy, right? Okay, so divided by, and then it's 2 times m squared plus 1. Now, this is clearly two solutions, one of which is x equals um, negative 2m squared minus 2 um, all over um, 2m squared plus 2. And if you take out a negative 1 from the numerator, you'll see that you have 2m squared plus uh, 2 in the numerator and denominator once you fa factored out a negative 1. I got caught between saying figure it out and factor it out. Uh, anyway, anyway, yeah, this is clearly negative 1, and that's that point right there, x equals negative 1. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, we knew that, um, that that was going to be one of the solutions. We're interested in this other solution. What's the x-coordinate of that? I just changed this from a minus to a plus, and that's um, this coordinate, right? Okay, so one of them we already dealt with with a minus, and now we have the plus part. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, so like, clearly we can simplify a little, which is um, take out the... 2 from the numerator, let's actually um, use better space, um, so get rid of this. And so this is going to equal, um, it's, if we take out the 2, it's going to be 2 times negative m squared uh, plus 1 divided by uh, 2 times m squared plus 1. And so we can do this, right? Boom, boom. And um, that's going to say right there. So what is that? That's, um, well, sorry, let me go back to white. So that's, that's um, x equals, and mathematicians don't like leading with negative terms, so 1 minus m squared divided by m squared plus 1. Cool. So, so like, this is like um, this guy. Now we need this guy with the same denominator, right? And so we just need the corresponding y value to this. So we just found out the x coordinate is going to be what I just circled right here. And so we need the y-coordinate. And the y-coordinate is pretty easy to calculate if we plug it into uh, the equation of the line, right? So um, in our system there, like, so if we plug in for x with this, then we can find the corresponding y-value, right? It's harder to use the circle, so let's use the line. So if you do that, if you do that a little um, carefully, then with a relatively simple algebra, you should find that the corresponding y uh, coordinate is going to be y equals, uh, it's going to be 2m divided by m squared plus 1. So there we are. Um, the pair of points um, that uh, we found as solutions to uh, this circle, which are going to be rational so long as we choose m to be rational, are going to be uh, 1 minus m squared over um, m squared plus 1, comma, 2m over m squared um, plus 1. And believe it or not, these two pair of points will uh, generate um, infinitely many Pythagorean triples, including the two base Pythagorean triples we wrote earlier. Want to bet? All right, I'll show you. So um, let's do a couple of examples. So let m be the rational number, 1 half. What happens? Well, this part, right, uh, the x coordinate is going to say 1 minus 1 half squared, so 1 minus a quarter divided by a quarter plus 1. And then the y coordinate is going to say 2 times 1 half divided by a quarter plus 1. So that's going to say, like, this guy here is 3 fourths 
divided by, and this is 5 fourths, comma, and that's 1, right? Divided by, and this is 5 fourths. And so that's going to say um, 3 fifth, comma, 4 fifth. Wait, what? Look, so that's that, A, B, and then C, right? And then C, if you want to say it again. That's a 3, 4, 5 base Pythagorean triple. And um, if instead you plugged in like 2 thirds, let's do it together. So if we plugged in like M equals 2 thirds, so another rational number, then we'd get um, 1 minus 2 thirds squared is 4 ninths divided by, you're going to quickly see where this is going to go, 4 ninths plus 1, do you already see it? And then 2 times 2 thirds is uh, 4 thirds divided by 4 ninths plus 1. And so that's going to say 5 ninths divided by, uh, divided by um, 13 ninths, comma, 4 thirds, divided by 13 ninths, and that's going to be 5 over 13, comma, and it's, what is it going to be? 12 over 13. So the 5, 12, 13. There you go. Yeah? Are you convinced? Are you convinced? Well, if not, keep plugging in more numbers and you'll get more Pythagorean triples. All right. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I clearly did. Um, and keep watching. There will be more examples of nonlinear systems and they'll be just as fun. Yeah? Cool. All right. Take care.